The Cleveland Browns are a very interesting team. This was supposed to be a very important year, mainly for Deshaun Watson, somebody that they gave up so much for. We didn't get to see a lot of him last year because of that suspension. And then when he did play, well, he wasn't very good. He started off this season and then all of a sudden he was hurt. And on Sunday, he didn't play. PJ Walker did, who you may remember from the Carolina Panthers or the XFL. Yet somehow the Browns managed to take down one of, if not the best team in football, the 49ers, who were 5-0 coming into the game. But first, thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's video. Upside is the perfect app for anybody that buys gas, groceries, or eats out. You can literally get cash back on every purchase. It's amazing. And with how bad inflation has been, you're probably looking for any way to save some money. And Upside can help offset some of that. Gas is super crazy, but getting some cash back from Upside makes it feel a little bit cheaper. Luckily, the app is super easy to use too. I just look for a good offer and then I claim it and go buy whatever it is. Maybe if I get enough cash back, I can go to even more random football games, which is what it's all about. Saving money to do something you like. So that's a huge win. For you to get started, go download the free Upside app and use our code JDPROD and you get an extra 25 cents back per gallon on your first tank of gas. Next, you can claim an offer for whatever you want to buy on Upside. Pay like you usually would with your card, follow the steps on the app and get paid. You can cash out any time to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Upside customers are saving hundreds every year. It's a must download. So again, download the Upside app and use our code JDPROD and get an extra 25 cents back every gallon on your first tank of gas. Thank you again to Upside for sponsoring today's video and let's get right back to it. Now, this one really did look like it was going to be just a very normal 49ers win. Christian McCaffrey, of course, scored early. He can't go a single game without scoring, apparently. And you thought this was just going to be a normal Niners win, and then it wasn't. Now, the Niners were eventually up 10-0, to zero, but Kareem Hunt scored from 16 yards out to trail by only three heading into the half. Still, even being a 10-7 game and the Browns being right there on the doorstep, it's the Browns versus the 49ers. You still have to expect the 49ers to win. The Browns made it really interesting, though. Dustin Hopkins hit two field goals in the third quarter, and the Browns were suddenly up 13 to 10. But like they normally do, the 49ers responded. They scored to retake the lead. It was an eight yard Jordan Mason touchdown. At this point, it seemed like the Niners were going to win the game. They had regained the lead in the fourth quarter. Their defense always good. You know they can make that stand, and they did it. Now, with less than four minutes remaining, the Browns were still trailing 17 to 13, and then Hopkins hit a 50-yard field goal to make it 17 to 16. Now, normally in that situation, a coach like especially Kevin Stefanski would go for it there, but he made the right decision not in this situation, and that is because P.J. Walker was sacked by Nick Bosa. So instead of it being a manageable fourth and whatever, it was fourth and 21. And even though that field goal wasn't going to tie it up, it made more sense to just go ahead, see if even the Niners scored and you'd only be down eight, you can at least try to get the ball back. So that's just good coaching there. I think there are some coaches that would have gone for it on that fourth and 21, but still you gave San Francisco the ball back with a very, very real chance to just ice the game and end it. But then the Browns defense got the stop. Cleveland got the ball back and they drove it down the field and then Dustin Hopkins made a 29 yarder to take the lead 19 to 17 but they gave Brock Purdy too much time there was still a minute 40 remaining it was too much for Kyle Shanahan it was too much for Brock Purdy and here's the thing he got the Niners down in field goal range the 49ers were able to move the ball at will they got down and it's like oh my gosh the Niners as always found a way to win this one and then Jake Moody missed a 41 yard field goal and that's it 19 to 17 the Browns win the first loss in Brock Purdy's career after he won his first 10 regular season starts now he didn't have the best day but he didn't play terrible PJ Walker kind of did though he only completed 18 of 30 
34 passes and he threw two interceptions. It wasn't great. Amari Cooper had a great day with over 100 yards, but the big story for the Browns was the defense. There's been a lot of talk about the Browns defense since the win, and this is a really, really good defense. Just looking at the line, Miles Garrett and Zadarius Smith coming off of the edges is absolutely disgusting. Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa, Anthony Walker are there at linebacker, and then there's some pretty interesting names there in the secondary, most notably Denzel Ward. They also have Grant Delpit at safety, Greg Newsom opposite of Ward. This is a team with a lot of defensive talent, and it's starting to come together, and to be able to stop a team like the 49ers is a huge, huge sign. That really shows that they can compete and really try to win the NFC North. If you can stop the 49ers, in my opinion, you can stop anybody. They held the Niners to just 215 yards. It was an incredible day for that defense, but I do worry that the Browns' issues aren't on defense. They're on offense. Now, I don't think anyone is going to start asking for PJ Walker to suddenly be the starter. Either you don't have eyes or you know nothing. That'd be a complete disaster. Nobody wants to see PJ Walker struck back out here and start for this team. It is interesting, though, that the Browns were able to pull off the win without Deshaun Watson. Now, I don't have a ton of faith in Deshaun Watson. I've been quoted on that on the channel many times. I will say in those first three games he played this season, I think he did look a lot better than he did at the end of last season. And I think that's expected. This guy did not play football for over a year and a half. Remember, he didn't play that last year in Houston. And then he had that long suspension when he got to Cleveland. So it's not that surprising that he came out super rusty. Now the question is, are we ever going to see that old Deshaun Watson once again? In his three starts, Watson threw for 678 yards, four touchdowns and two interceptions. Not, I mean, terrible, but again, nothing special. And this is a guy that needs to be special. The Browns gave up three firsts and gave him a fully guaranteed five-year $230 million deal. Now, there's a reason that organizations like the Browns continue to fail over long periods of time. They don't know what they're doing. They make stupid decisions. Look at the Browns. Look at the Chargers. Look at the Redskins under Dan Snyder. That's why sometimes you need to change ownership. You need to change who is making those calls because there's some organizations that just screw everything up. And the Browns are obviously one of them. Now, there was also a lot of hype behind Dorian Thompson Robinson, who fifth round rookie out of UCLA. He was really good in the preseason. There was a lot of hype behind him, but there's a reason that it isn't the regular season. He played against the Ravens in that first game where Watson was hurt, and he completed just 19 of 36 passes for 121 yards and three interceptions. That ended up being why PJ Walker played instead last week. Now, I'm not out on DT are just yet. It's been one game for a fifth round rookie. There's a reason this guy wasn't a day one or two pick. He's got a lot of things to figure out, and he's a guy that I could actually see developing into maybe a solid backup quarterback, but he needs that time. Expecting DTR to come out and just play well was probably a little crazy. The good news for the Browns is it sounds like we are actually going to get Deshaun Watson back this weekend. That is, unless his shoulder hurts again. Now, in all, Cleveland is a team that I definitely could see making making the postseason. I don't think they'll do shit once they get there, but they could definitely, they could be there. They haven't won back-to-back -back games all season, but they also haven't lost back-to-back -back games. They're kind of perfectly mid and a bottom tier wildcard team, in my opinion. They blew out the Bengals to start the season and then barely lost to the Steelers and followed that with another blowout win, this time against the Titans. Now, those first three games, all you could have a positive spin on for the Browns. Two blowout wins and even your loss, you did narrowly lose to a team with a really good defense. Then all of a sudden, DTR played in week four and the Browns lost 28 to three. They had a week five bye, so Deshaun Watson did get even more time to rest. Obviously, it did not end up mattering. He did not play against the 49ers. I think a big question was going to be how the Browns would respond after that bye against a really, really good 49ers team coming off of getting blown out to the Ravens. And to turn around and beat San Francisco is huge. That's the kind of thing that they can really start a good vibe on this season. Now, here's what worries me, and here's what's a little weird. Deshaun Watson was 
medically cleared before the Browns week four game. He just wasn't ready. Now in football, usually whoever it is that's injured or whatever is always jawing to get back out there, even if they are actually hurt. So it worries me a little bit that Watson just kind of sat himself out, especially when he's on a team with David Njoku, who obviously had that burning incident and is out there still playing. And I can't imagine how much pain he is in with that helmet pressing up against. He's kind of made a platform for burn victims. And I know he's talked about people DMing him. It's just, I do think it's really cool what he's made out of such a bad situation. But then you have Deshaun Watson, who's not even playing through a shoulder injury, which does worry me. He's a guy that even before all of that, I've questioned his drive and his serious care to, you know, about the Browns. I just really don't think that this Deshaun Watson experiment is going to work out. And honestly, I hope it doesn't. The Browns were a fun team to root for when they were really, really bad. But then the way they backstabbed Baker Mayfield, the way they went after Deshaun Watson, who obviously had his own baggage. I think Cleveland at this point is just a team that a lot of people don't want to succeed. And I'm definitely in that group. Still, they have a solid roster. They might be okay this year. They could even make the playoffs, even without Nick Chubb, which is pretty impressive. But this isn't a Super Bowl contender. This is a team that at best, they sneak into the playoffs and probably get crushed in their first game. But hey, you beat the 49ers. You took down Brock Purdy for the first time. Maybe that was just the Browns Super Bowl this year.